Hey everybody, welcome to Precision Impact. My name is Dirk, and on today's segment, we have a very special guest, Cam McLaughlin. He is the technical director here at Absolute Baseball uh, and Fitness Center, and he's going to talk a little bit briefly about youth development, some of the problems that he sees in youth development, and the big gaps that we tend to see with some kids that excel at an extremely large rate, some kids that get left behind a little bit, and why it is that? Is it more of a coaching aspect? Is it something that parents could be involved a little bit more with? Is it something that the kids themselves could take more initiative and more accountability for? So I want you guys to welcome Cam McLaughlin to the show today. So I wanted you to briefly just tell everybody and our listeners and some of the kids that you work with, why, why is it or what is it that you see uh, that could improve drastically in our youth development, um, no matter what the category might be? I think the biggest thing it comes down to coaching, uh, level of coaching, you know, having parent coaches is awesome, it's great. Parents, a lot of parents volunteer their time. Um, but maybe being able to educate those coaches a little more for sure. um, so that the message being being uh, given to the kids, to the players, is a consistent one and a productive one long term. I, I always find that you know everyone has the ability to coach, but not everybody should be a coach. You know There are a lot of parents out there uh, that have the ability to coach, that, but, but maybe should step back and let some people uh, get involved a little bit more rather than try and do it them all themselves. Here, I see a huge variety of different coaches from all different walks of life. Some have played at the most elite level. Some just finished college, but make spectacular coaches. What do you think makes a good coach? I think experience is a big, a big thing both playing and coaching. Sure. Um, you know, there's I've, we've seen guys that have co or played at a high level that don't necessarily make great coaches. Um, you know, finding that balance, they've, they've got experience that, that they can relate to the kids, they can tell the kids about, but then also be able to turn it into coaching. Um, you know, relatability with, with kids these days, I think is huge. Um, there's, you are seeing a lot more, we are seeing a lot more younger kind of guys that just finished playing, getting into coaching, um, I think players are responding to that really well. What do you think about kids? So if, say, say a young player gets uh, put with a coach that might not have the experience or knowledge necessary for him to break through at an elevated or a very uh, quick rate, what can youth players do themselves to start taking charge and make sure they progress the way they need to? Yeah, I mean, kids these days are lucky. There's a lot of different avenues out there, social media, YouTube, uh, all that stuff. So, you know, you're always going to have coaches, whether they're elite or not, uh, whether you agree or disagree. You know, you still have to be coachable. You still have to take things from every experience as a player. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot they can do now. They can get their own work in at home. They can research what they should be doing. Uh, you know, they have so many different avenues to research the proper fielding techniques, the proper swings. Um, you know? I was a big believer too that, um, and I've said this on other segments before, where in, in our day and age we have a lot of resources at our disposal, but it's it's not always that, it's not always what's important, it's a matter of being resourceful, being able to utilize the internet, going on YouTube, finding you know, the right videos, maybe it's reaching out to a coach or finding that right piece of equipment, or maybe it's just showing up here at a facility like this on your own spare time and doing some extra hitting, and maybe a coach like yourself has a few minutes and they come over and help so it's not always a matter about having all these resources but make sure that if you're a young player make sure that you're resourceful and reaching out to coaches like us quite a bit if you can um, what about in terms of in season what do you like to see from your organizations and youth players in season uh, if they're struggling or even if they're doing really well what, could, what are some of the things that you like to see in season for them to take care of and stay on top of I mean Physical fitness, physical shape is huge. Um, you always got to be getting better. You know, no matter what level they're at, it's, that season can be long, it can be a grind. You can get into the day-to-day -day monotonous, 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 monotonous uh, routine. Um, you know, so it's making sure that it's always quality reps. It's always, like you said, coming in, getting your work in. Mid-season, it's not always. Oh, I need to get BP in because I got games this week. It's, no, I, I can come in on my own. I can get a tee and I can still work on things that are still going to matter. Yeah, and the know. fundamentals, I mean, every coach should be really driving home the fundamentals. They are uh, the foundation to any house, right? You want to make sure your foundation set really nice and strong, and it begins with, it doesn't mean necessarily being a part of an 18-man roster at practice. Sometimes those fundamentals come from throwing a ball against a wall, or playing a catch with just one person by yourself, or coming in here and hitting off a tee, 
um, or getting somebody to give you some long or some front toss. It's those fundamentals that I think a lot of people overlook. There's a lot of youth kids these days that don't hit enough off the tee. They want to get to the nitty gritty. They want to get to the fun stuff, which is overhand BP or some front toss or maybe game like situations. But you know, a lot of them struggle and don't find the success they want to find, and they wonder why. Well, they've been in here, you know, they feel like they're doing a lot of effective work, but the reality is they're neglecting those those really small tools that we as coaches probably really value, which is teamwork. I, I want to be able to see a kid or a young athlete who's 15, 16, 17 years old be an absolute surgeon on a team. Right? That tells me that he has put some work in, that he's hit a ball off a team a quarter million times. Um, and I think that's really neglected. But what about uh, in terms of attitudes and stuff like that? Do you see that that could be a contributing factor a little bit into why some of these youth kids aren't developing the way they should? 100%. Yeah, it's that's probably the biggest gap between you know youth up here and youth down in the U.S. Um, it's paying attention to those fundamentals, uh, the quality reps, the reps with a purpose, um, and it's on the fundamental stuff. Sure. It's there's a huge gap. We just went down to Arizona, and the, the 12 year olds down there. Are impressive, right? They do things right, but it's it starts with the fundamentals. And I think if we, um, as Canadians up here, got more exposure to you know the levels of one age group. So um, I mean, when you're in the states and getting to travel and play travel ball and things like that, you're getting to experience all those those variable elite levels of baseball. And I think it wakens you up a little bit to think, you know what? Like the things that I'm doing right now are not enough. I'm not waking up early enough. I'm not trying hard enough. I'm not making adjustments quick enough. I'm not listening to coach enough. Or maybe I'm just not pushing myself enough. And it's when you get to see those traveling teams, which was great, an opportunity for those kids to go down there and visit in, in Arizona. Um, I think when, when we kind of get stuck in our own little bubble in our own city, in our own province, that we don't get exposed enough to the elite levels that exist out there. And so, you know, and I, you know, I've said this a few times before, that there's nothing to be proud of, of being the best of the worst. Right, you want to know the category you want to fit into, and you know if, if you're a competitive ball player like us, you know I always envision myself playing at the absolute highest level. And when I got a chance to see that firsthand, whether it was going to uh, a spring training game uh, in Florida, or whether it was getting to see some college tournaments, or just anything, even watching some videos and some games on TV, I wanted to be there, and I, I got to see firsthand what pitchers looked like at that elite level, which then drove home, really drove me when I came home to really push myself further because. I have not really seen that level anywhere around where I grew up at. And I'm from Vancouver, BC, and there were some really good uh, quality players there, but not at the same caliber as there are in some of the states. So I think um, definitely some of the attitudes and exposure to some of those elite levels, we're seeing 12-year-old kids nearly as big as I am throwing the ball harder than I ever have. And I think 12-year-olds these days think that they're good enough. And yet they still want to play at those elite levels and I think if we as Canadians got a chance to see some more of these uh, elite athletes, I think it, we would see a completely different athlete back here and hopefully you're going to get, get a chance to see some of your athletes that you brought down there wake up a little bit to say that, you know, if you ask these kids uh, how many days a week are you training and they'll say I'm training three times a day and if they were to compare what it means to be you know, one of those elite athletes as to what they're doing, it might provoke them, like we talked about, to come in on their own days off, to get more fundamental work on. I bet some of those 12 year olds um, that you saw down there that were pretty elite are living off a team. Their fundamentals are very solid, and that's what kind of separates them apart, what I think, are their fundamentals are so solid. That's, that, that's something so simple, but it, sets, it creates such a huge gap. So, I mean, other than attitude, other than obviously coaching and some other accountability stuff like that, what about from the parents? Do you think the parents play a bit of a role in terms of the gaps between, you know, some of these more elite athletes and some kids that are getting left behind? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it's it's a big commitment to, to train as much as it takes to get there, and a lot of that with the young athletes is the parents. And I don't know if, if parents up here don't understand that getting to the next level in baseball is a possibility. It doesn't just have to be Little League, um, but it will take a commitment. Uh, you know, a lot of the families are willing to put in that extra effort, that extra commitment levels to other sports like hockey up here. Um, but a lot of it is just baseball, it's just the wreck. It's just to have fun, it's just a time feel like, you know, parents, I don't think they realize that it is a possibility. For sure. And, you know, kind of, we've tried to educate them a little bit and let them know this is a possibility, it's gonna take work. Um, and we're not even close to being there. But yeah, the parents, they're everything, right? They, this is a big city. 
parents got to bring their kids here. Belief is, is number one, and if it comes from the parents as well as the athletes and the coaches, I think collectively uh, believing that you can go down to a Division One school or a JUCO or go down to the States is number one. Yes. Right? If, if you don't believe you can, your, your training is going to suffer, your mentality is going to suffer, your body language is going to be exposed. Um, so I think that if the parents are there in a constructive way, pushing the, the athletes constructively um, and not necessarily making it all about them, right? And then you know, if, if, if a team loses a game and the parents aren't like, well, you did a great job, you know, you should be proud of yourself. You know, I was, my, my, my dad was a big advocator for saying, look, you guys win as a team, you lose as a team. I don't care if you threw a one hitter and lost, hey, you, you played great, but guess what? You, you lost just as much as they did just when we win. So it's really important that you don't think that you need to be completely different or separate or unique or, you know, doing things different to be a better ball player. Sometimes being a really good ball player means being being part of the team, winning and losing, your body language, showing up on time, you know, not separating yourself from the group. And you know, when the team's doing something collectively together, you're, you know, that black sheep off the side. That's not what's going to make you a better ball player. You're not going to stand out in a positive way simply because you're doing things different. Scouts are looking for that kind of guy who's, you know, maybe a pitcher, but in the cage for 10 hours, front tossing all day long to his hitters. You know that doesn't necessarily have to be something very special. You might think it's really simple, but the reality is you don't need to rewrite the book on baseball to stand out. Sometimes it's those little things. Being a really good quality teammate is what's going to make you stand out because these days there aren't very many. For sure, and like baseball is a very individualized sport, sure. right? It's one-on-one -on -one battles all over the field. Um, so I think that team element does get lost a lot of times uh, with with those kids that, you know, there's a lot of kids that put in the extra work, but then they're, they're lacking on that side. They're too individual, like yeah. you said, and, and that's, again, where parents can help with driving that into them as much, you know, coaches can do it, coaches have to do it, um, and we do do it, but if they get in the car after the game and there's nothing about the team, it's all about their son or daughter's individual performance, that's going to be hard for that kid to then take on that mentality too, right? So, and at the next level, at the college level, it is all family. It's team. I mean, you you're running it. You're running yourself into a lot of problems by trying to be, you know, that you're really unique and special person. Sometimes it's just going on the mound. Your coach says, "Hey, try your hardest," and you try your hardest. That's what's going to really separate you from some of these guys. It doesn't have to be trying to like reinvent it with a new motion or doing something silly. Sometimes it's just listening to what your coach says, doing it, and following instructions ex extremely effectively. Sometimes that will separate you from the rest of the pack. For sure. Um, Cam, I really appreciate you coming on today and chatting with us a little bit about youth development and some of the things you see. Um, as always, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this video, leave them down below. Thanks very much.